and bond yields are down sharply today after those job openings fell to their lowest level in two and a half years. Steve Leisman has the rest of the data and what it means for the Fed's next move. And in fairness, Steve, bond yields were falling even before we got these reports. Yeah, look what happens. I go away for a couple of days and the whole operation goes like uh, <laughs> south on me. At least yields did. Data coming in today, Kelly, in line with the general idea of an economy that is slowing, which is what the bond market likes, and creating the context for further declines in inflation, which the Fed, of course, will like. ISM services, 51.8, uh, uh, was 51.8, now 52.7, growing a bit faster, but still subdued relative to the numbers we'd had when services were coming back. The price index unchanged at the pre-pandemic level of 58, and employment modest at around the 50 level. Jolts, uh, 9.6 was the prior. Big miss to the downside, 8.7 million. That's job openings. That's what uh, the Fed wants to see. Those job openings decline in the quits rate, unchanged at a lower level, 2.3%. Joe Lavornia looks at the quits rate, says labor costs are poised to slow further in the months ahead, which no doubt is welcome news for the Fed and the bond market. All of this making the market more sure of coming rate cuts from the Fed in the not too distant future. January percent is just 12 percent, but March rocketing up to 64 percent. Uh, today, May, they're darn sure there at 91 percent. And then look at the trajectory of rates. We look at the off month meeting uh, off months, the ones without meetings. Um, and you can see there's like a quarter built in at almost every meeting with a bit more towards the end of the year. Look at that January 25 contract to look at what uh, in, in 24, 4 percent or 1.4 percent of rate cuts in there. The question is if the market is too confident about how soon and by how much the Fed's going to cut. Inflation has been coming down, but not in a straight line. The market may be priced to have little tolerance here for inevitable disappointments in the data, Kelly. All right, Steve, stay with us as we bring in Nationwide's chief economist, Kathy Bustjancic. Kathy, welcome back. The last time we spoke, it, just in October, we were talking about the possibility of another hike still being on the table. But do you think that's definitely out the window now? Well, hi, Kelly. Happy to be with you and Steve. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing how, you know, just a matter of two months or so, uh, makes such a big difference. Um, yeah, we, we think that the Fed is is, is now done uh, raising rates. Um, the inflation numbers that Steve alluded to have come in better and have been very encouraging, and, and the job numbers as well, Jules, this morning. Um, it's it just adding to the fact that you know, the economy looks like it's slowing, and, and perhaps that's soft landing. Now, we still hold a, a mild recession forecast for next year, um, but it, in all intensive purposes, the focus is now on how many rate cuts. Um, you know, we we have for a while thought that they could start to cut rates in May uh, and end of the year actually at four percent. And the markets have come, as Steve illustrated, really come right in line with that. Although it's happened so quickly, that makes me concerned and a little uneasy. Hmm. And and also the fact that they're pricing in cuts in March, I think that's a bit premature uh, to see that play out. 